Hi folks, my name is Joseph Jankowski. Uh, if you don't already know me and you just stumbled across this video on YouTube, um, this is a project I did for a programming class at Oregon Institute of Technology. It's a digital storage oscilloscope and function generator that I designed in LabVIEW, which is a really cool piece of software um, that allows you to do all kinds of um, awesome stuff with user interface designs and interfacing with equipment. I highly recommend checking it out. It was a blast learning how to use it. It's lots of fun. Um, so let's get started here. Um, my general philosophy in approaching uh, this project was to create something that seemed familiar, something that resembled um, the equipment like Tektronix scopes and benchtop function generators that um, I'm familiar with and other students are familiar with that we've all used before. And uh, that creates an interface which is um, more intuitive, um, that's more tactile, that uh, feels like something you want to use and not like punching numbers into a spreadsheet. Um, um, but yet still gives you the advantages of software. And I think it turned out pretty nice. Uh, LabVIEW gives you a lot of options um, and makes it really easy to create some nice UI designs. Um, what I'm not a fan of is the um, uh, some of the popular um, uh, methods of taking like pictures of hardware and putting knobs on it and designing around that and not that I haven't seen some amazing stuff with that. I, I mean, I it's there's some mind blowing stuff out there. Um, there's a guy in my class, Arthur Pratt, who did some. Man, your project was pretty amazing. But for me personally, um, whenever I try to design something that way, I just get frustrated um, because I can't put things where I want them, and I I want to do it from the ground up. So I took a different approach, and that was to use the basic GUI elements of LabVIEW. Um, just the standard stock stuff and try to push it as far as I could with my mediocre programming skills to make it something resembling a real uh, life tool. Um, and I think it turned out pretty well. The only thing that's not stock lab view in here are these knobs which I made in Photoshop because I thought the knobs in lab view were just kinda tacky and I, I couldn't get them to do what I wanted. Um, and the only other thing is this crosshair display here uh, which is from Photoshop it's just overlaid over the normal grid I know this looks terrible on these low resolution videos um, I guarantee you uh, you just have to trust me that it looks good in person um, there's actually eight nice even major divisions in both directions with four minor divisions and divided into four quadrants um, so you can easily make measurements it just looks terrible in the video. It's just the way it, it renders. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go through this really quick and just hit the basics, and then we'll get into the actual like functions here. So this is the function generator. It has waveform selection, amplitude control with a 40 dB um, attenuation, offset control, that's a DC offset, uh, frequency knob, um, it also, you can save your uh, signal to an output file, an uh, Excel spreadsheet with one um, sample uh, per cell for the amplitude. It has a noise generator um, that you can toggle on and off, and it has a selection of uniform Gaussian noise. And this frequency multiplier allows you to get a wide range of frequencies from 1 hertz all the way up to a, a megahertz. And everything here is displayed on this menu. Um, which is you can flip through and select what you want to adjust. So moving on to the scope, we have a two-channel oscilloscope here. This basically replicates all the major functions of a hardware oscilloscope. It's fully featured and capable. Um, uh, it does everything you basically need for an entry-level scope. It's has two channels. Um, the horizontal controls are linked together. The vertical controls are independent. You get a readout of your amplitude, peak to peak, RMS, DC offset, and your frequency color coded um, on the right here. And your 
units of your grid here on the bottom, uh, color coded as channel one and channel two, which are independent. You have your volts per division and your uh, time per division, and that's by the major divisions on this um, grid here. Um, and then you have a cursor, a line width adjustment, a bunch of other options here like spectrogram, AC coupling, triggering, and uh, save your plot, um, and different window selections for the FFT uh, spectrogram. So let's walk through this. Um, the coolest thing definitely here is, uh, in my opinion, is the Lissagist display, which you see going right now. It's my favorite part of this uh, scope. It wasn't part of the assignment, but it turned out so cool I, I had to leave it in. It just, uh, um, it's really visually stunning. And since I did that, I also added these fine-tuned frequency knobs down here which on the function generators, which allow you to um, adjust the frequency uh, a very fine amounts, which um, has a dramatic effect on the Lissages display because uh, small differences in frequency create different shapes. So I'll show you that right now. So changing the fine adjustment in the frequency, you can create all kinds of cool patterns like so. And you can lock one in channel in place with a trigger. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just like hours of fun with that thing. You can like use different waveforms. You get all kinds of cool mess out of it. It's uh, kind of addictive. Anyway, but let's get into the more practical stuff. So I'll turn that off. Um, we have controls here for channel one. Um, channel 2 on and off and then the XY summed which you've seen and what that is is just the list is just is the uh, um, channel 1's amplitude on one axis and channel 2's amplitude on the other axis to create these cool parametric patterns um, so let's turn on channel 1 here and we can either adjust the frequency to get it to um, slow down the screen and lock into place which um, is nice or we can actually just trigger it here with the trigger control that's the trigger for channel 1 we also have a trigger for channel 2 and we can trigger them independently or together and um, we have an individual scale for each channel and yes it is independent for each channel uh, this is not something built into LabVIEW. This is kind of a hack. Uh, it's an uh, algorithm I made to um, do this. It's a little glitchy because it has to recalculate one of the waveforms every time you adjust the other one. But it's accurate and it works. Um, you can look here and you can see the volts per division readout for each channel individually. Um, like, for example, right now we have a um, 5. 6-1 volt peak-to-peak -peak waveform at 1 volt per division and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.6 and then on the other channel it's 1 volt per division. Let's change that to something else just for the heck of it. Um, 500 millivolts per division and you can see that it's uh, 2.17 volts peak-to-peak -peak, so that's 1 volt, 2 volts, 2.17. Um, we can also offset the channels individually with the shift function. Um, now this is something that isn't uh, featured on Tektronix scopes, which I really like after I implemented it. And I'm kind of disappointed that Tektronix doesn't do this. Um, but on a, a normal scope, um, when you shift uh, with an offset like this, and then you adjust the scale, um, it'll usually throw your waveform off of the window because it, it doesn't compensate for it. Uh, I wrote compensation in here so that it actually uh, stays locked in the same place when you adjust the scale um, so that your waveform doesn't wander all over the place. And um, now that's not a real DC, it's just a shift on the screen. If you do a real DC offset, so let's take our function generator and we'll um, uh, I'll take the trigger off so we can um, the trigger doesn't always like DC offset um, for some reason. So, so 
let's say I put a DC offset on channel 1. So I'll shift this up like this. Now if we adjust the shift control, um, or not the shift control, but the uh, scale control, we can see that the waveform does shift because um, its DC level is actually changing. But we can get rid of that if we want by just simply clicking this AC coupling control and now their DC level has been eliminated and we're coupled to AC. Um, might be a little bit easier to see on channel 2. So if we turn our AC coupling off, we're off of the screen. There we go. So we're shifting around. If we turn on AC coupling, it locks it in place to our shift control, like that. All right. So that shows you the uh, DC offset control on the function generator, which can be toggled. It can be adjusted here based on this menu for DC offset. So you can see your readout. It's heavily filtered, so it updates pretty slowly. You can see your readout. Negative 3.62 corresponds to negative 3.62 DC offset on the scope. All right. So moving on, um, we also have a horizontal control. Um, I'll trigger the signals so we can adjust the phase of the signals in the window. Um, we have a spectrogram here. So I'll trigger that. And that actually uses the same controls. Uh, let me dial up a more complicated waveform. Get a nice square wave going. And there you can see it on the screen. And right now this is in volts uh, per division, so it uses the same adjustment here as channel one. Um, I'll probably eventually add decibels to that, um, but that's in version 2.0, uh, which will come out later. Um, and they're actually both channels are controlled on the same um, scale control. and. Originally, I had them independent, but I found it actually more useful to put them on the same control. So you can toggle back and forth between them and compare them, uh, make adjustments, toggle back and forth, and so on and so forth without having random differences between the windows. Um, on the spectrogram, you also have different window settings, uh, like Blackman-Harris, Hamming, Hanning, and that works for either waveform. You can see the window setting here. And um, the only other function here in the menu is the save function. So let me show you how that works. I'll dial in something here. Something we want to see. Oops. Trigger it. And we'll save this to the desktop. So once you get what you want on the screen, you just hit the Save Plot button. It's that easy. Now you can go to your desktop, and you have a nice cropped image of your display with all your voltage and uh, your um, unit settings here. So that's really nice if you just want to, you know, take a bunch of screenshots as you're making measurements. Uh, the last thing to show you on the scope here are actually two things. Uh, we have a width adjustment here, um, which is like a brightness control. It adjusts both waveforms at the same time. Um, and then we have our cursors, which put cursors on the screen and for now these are locked to channel 1. I will eventually implement it to be channels uh, for channel 2 also uh, with selectability but it's a little bit more involved than I thought it would be and I didn't really have time. So for now they're just on channel 1 and you see our output um, based on our volts per division and our uh, milliseconds per division here on this uh, uh, XY output. And we can adjust the cursors this way or we can click and drag them with the mouse. And this toggles them on and off. Um, I think that's it for this oscilloscope.